Carl Graves. I'm Crunch Kretschmar. Today I got a special guest for a lot of you restaurant and um, coffee shop owners. I have Benjamin Sinekia from Benjamin Tees. Benjamin, why don't you introduce yourself to the Bottle Grapes customers? Okay. My name is Benjamin, and I am the owner of a gourmet tea company called Benjamin Tea, based in Chicago. Benjamin Tea started a little over two years ago, after I had lived in Europe for a few years, um, working on building coffee shops and cafes. Um, in my work and in my travels, I stumbled across a boutique tea company in Vienna. They have been blending teas for over 300 years and I fell in love with the product and I decided to move back to the United States and distribute it. Um, now when I speak with restaurant owners and um, managers of restaurants about um, tea, I'm very aware that tea is not their main line of business. But tea is nonetheless important for two reasons. Firstly, um, there is an uptrend of tea. Uh, more and more people are consuming tea. Uh, more and more people are um, uh, educated and are conscious about what kind of tea they want and they're demanding a higher end tea. And the second reason why tea is important for a restaurant is that it's the last detail of your dining experience. Studies show that customers will remember their first impression okay. about a restaurant or their dinner experience and the last impression. And actually they're gonna remember their last impression the most. And that's usually when they will uh, get tea and coffee or that last Absolutely. bottle of, or that last glass of uh, wine. Correct, after the meal. correct. Okay. After dinner, it's you're gonna top it off either with a nice glass of wine or a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Okay. And if it is a cup of tea, then that's the last impression that you're leaving with your customer. It's the last taste, it's the last flavor that you're leaving in their mouth as the customer walks out your door and therefore it becomes very important. Right, so usually the, those are the only three end of the meal you know, drinks that you would finish it off with and you know if you already have a great wine selection that's great, you have great coffee that's good but you don't want to miss that other 33% of the people who are the tea drinkers so you would want to have a good you know, uh, tea exactly. to offer them. Exactly. Okay. Um, the standard service for higher end establishments for tea is the tea box. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a wooden yep. box with an assortment of tea bags. Nice. Um, there's two problems that I have with a box. The first uh, is in the quality of the tea. Any tea that is in a bag has been ground up. And uh, like any food product, once it's ground, it dies. Um, tea that's been ground up actually looks like dust. Um, yeah. It was once whole leaf, it was once um, something uh, natural and is now ground up. And it loses its taste, it loses its flavor, and it loses its health properties. Oh. So now um, teas that are in bags have to be pumped with artificial flavoring and colorants and all this stuff to, to get anything out of it. The second uh, reason I don't like the, uh, the tea box presentation is the box is not very informative. Um, I pick up a bag of tea and what I see is um, writing on a colored piece of paper. Um, it tells me uh, words that I could find on a line on your menu. Now I don't know what the tea looks like, I don't know what the tea smells like, I don't know what the tea tastes like because this is sealed right. and it's just some writing on a color. I know the color of the packet that it's in, basically. Correct. That's what the box is doing. And just like in, a, in wine, when you swirl, you want to smell it, you want to see it. Those are very important you know, um, presentations in a wine if uh, you know, the customer is going to like it. Exactly. Now the Benjamin Tea display um, that I've developed does exactly that. It allows you to see the tea and allows you to taste the tea. My display concept is a board um, that has magnetic tins on top. Um, there's a handle on the back. This is designed to be brought out as instead of the uh, tea box. So um, the tins are magnetic. Um, they will not fall off. This is pretty lightweight. You would set it in front of your customers and the tins have a clear top so the customer can see the tea. Um, you can open the tins, you can smell the tea, and also there's labels to tell you the ingredients of the teas. So now you're completely informed about what you're going to buy. Yeah, so it has the caffeine free. Correct. And caffeine, whether it's herbal tea. Correct. I can actually see the product, I can actually smell it, and then both to the different difference of it would be what would you rather 
what would you rather be looking at? <laughs> it's you know, uh, it's an rather? easy choice. It's an easy choice. All right. The second, uh, the second thing that the display board does, um, other than inform the customer, is that it produces a wow effect. Um, customers are not expecting this. Uh, I'm a new company, I'm small, I'm boutique, so uh, this is not very widely spread. So when you bring this out, customers are impressed and they say, wow, this is so cool, I haven't seen this before. Um, and given that tea is the last thing that they're gonna have and it's the last impression you're making, getting a wow effect mm -hmm. from your tea and the last detail is is priceless because you're exceeding your customers' expectations. It's like pouring from the uh, candle on the wine from the uh, candle underneath to catch the settlement. They like that wild presentation. You got a nice, beautiful presentation with Benjamin tea. That's exactly it. Right. Um, let me talk about the quality of the tea briefly, and then how you serve loose tea efficiently. Okay. Um, firstly, I carry every category of tea. I have fruit teas. I have herbal teas. I have uh, red teas. I have whites, I have greens, I have blacks, and I have oolong teas. I carry 52 blends of tea. Okay. Um, my fruit teas are all um, whole fruit and nuts. Uh, my roasted almond, for example, is apple pieces, plain and crushed almonds, cinnamon pieces, and beetroot pieces. And these are um, all information on the back of each? Correct, these are on the back. Uh, okay. My fruit teas are completely edible because um, it's all dry fruit and nuts, so you can munch on this. There's no added preservatives. There's no chemicals oh. you should be worried about. You can actually eat these. So you, you can eat the you can eat the fruit teas. Hmm. That's not fruit, but you can <laughs> <laughs> you can eat the fruit teas. You can eat the uh, roasted almonds. Um, my chamomile, for example, chamomile is an herbal tea, mm. and what you'll find actually is very that good. if your customer prefer an after meal snack. You know, snack you know, you can offer this as well. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's an added benefit. Um, my herbal teas, uh, my chamomile, for example, you will find that is um, it's hand-picked, it's organically grown, and it's whole flowers, and the, the petals are still on there. Mm. This is not chamomile dust. This is as, as, yeah. as good and as natural as they come. Uh, your health properties are there, your flavor is there, your smell and everything else is there. Uh, on some of my blends, you'll see something called um, natural flavoring, and I want to talk okay. to you about what that is. Yeah. The best example is Earl Grey. The flavoring in an Earl Grey tea is bergamot. Bergamot is a flower. This particular bergamot comes from the south of France, which is the best place for bergamot. And from, what, the Bur from the uh, Burgundy region. Correct, correct. So what they do is they, they uh, pick the flowers, they crush the flowers and extract the oils. Okay. So you have bergamot oil extracts. And then you take the black tea and you bathe it in the oil extracts. And that is natural flavoring. Same process with some of the mints, same process goes for the flavoring of all the teas. It's not added chemicals, it's not artificial flavoring, it's not powders, it's oils. It's right. oil extracts. Um, so you get an extremely aromatic flavor in, in each one of these. Um, lastly, how do you serve loose tea efficiently in a um, high-end restaurant? Okay. Uh, most people are scared to hear about loose tea, but I think there's uh, quite a number of ways to do it efficiently. Um, some restaurants prefer um, teapots. There's a variety of teapots, different shapes, sizes, uh, different price points. I find that the teapots are um, a little bit pricey in terms of operation okay. and they're hard to use. So I recommend two ways of um, serving Benjamin tea. Okay. Um, before I begin, your teas, your display is for display purposes only. You would not be serving tea out of here because people are putting their nose in it. Okay. Your physical That's, tea, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Go. Your physical tea would be uh, in tins in the back. This okay. is an airtight tin. Uh, it's designed for tea. It will keep the tea fresh in here for at least nine months. That's an airtight seal on the on the tin of it. Um, and the tin holds 40 servings of tea. Okay. Okay. So what you would do when you serve the tea is uh, somebody would pick the blend that they want. You would go to the back. You would open the tin. My first recommendation is an infuser. It's a classic standard way of serving tea in Europe. You open your tin. You get a teaspoon of tea. You squeeze open your infuser. Tea goes in there, and this would go into a cup of hot water like this. Now, what I recommend is I strongly recommend that you serve the infuser with the tea to the customer for a couple of reasons. Okay. Firstly, 
people love to play with their food. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they have the infuser, they're playing with their tea. Correct. And they're part of making the process. They're, they're part of the process of making their own tea, which is really cool. Yes. And also, they can control the strength of their tea. Okay. So there's practical reasons and other reasons for uh, for this kind of service. Um, my second recommendation, which is uh, quite a new contraption. Um, it's called the Magic Teapot. Just okay. came out a um, couple of months ago, actually. And it's a teapot that has a mesh filter on the bottom. Okay. There's kind of like a press, kind of like a coffee looks, press. Looks like a coffee press. It looks okay. like a coffee press. There's four legs that are attached to the bottom, okay. so you could sit it on the table. Uh, but what this does is it has a weight sensor mechanism, okay. and um, it will send, it will release the tea into the cup when it senses its own weight. So I'll show you how it works. Yeah. You pour some hot water in there, and again, one teaspoon of tea. It would allow that to brew for a few minutes. And once it's brewed, you would put it on top of a cup of hot water, and the tea will release by itself. If you pick it up, it'll stop. Oh. So it's a very nifty contraption, a cool way to serve loose tea. It's extremely easy to clean. It's extremely durable. Uh, it's very sturdy plastic. There's no moving parts. Okay. So uh, how does that, as far as a regular teacup, is that something to use for a regular teacup? Or would this be more for the retail industry? This, and this you would prefer more for the uh, restaurants? That's a good question. This, mm -hmm. uh, this can be used for both. So some okay. of the establishments that I work with will bring this out and then they will bring an empty cup next to it. Okay. And then the customer can, can fill their own, own cup. Lap. So again, they're part of making their, 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 own. their own tea. Uh, this is cool for retail as well. So um, it's 16 ounces, so you get a good amount of tea. You probably get at least two, if not three cups of tea. It's a good amount of tea. Um, these are my recommendations for service. My goal is always um, efficiency, both in operation and in cost. So uh, my overall goal for Benjamin Tea is that um, your tea product is the best that it can be, um, okay. and that you are able to impress your customers with the last detail. If you're doing everything else right, you have a nice place, you have excellent service, why not have the best possible uh, tea and make an exclamation mark as your customer leaves um, your establishment? Well, great. Well, like I said, you, you kept it on. There's the 33 percent of the after dinner. You have your wine uh, customers, you'll have your coffee customers, you'll have your tea customers. You've already got 66 percent of them covered. Let's cover that other 33 percent and let's make it a wow factor here with Benjamin Tees. So, all that information, Benjamin Tees information is right here. Um, you'll get it all right down here below us. And if you have any questions or if you want any, uh, talk anything about these products, Benjamin will be more than glad to come out and visit you. And hopefully, you know, you'll get some of this tea in your establishment. Once again, I thank you very much, Benjamin. Thank you. Appreciate and it. We'll go ahead and we'll see you next time on Bottle Goods.